Hello, it's your favorite sports dunk here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the fastest growing community on YouTube. Remember, nightcap doesn't happen without you. So please subscribe or you're going to make Ocho cry. The Lions hold on and beat the Rams, get their first playoff win in 32 years. The Lions hosting their first playoff game in 30 years, snap the longest in it, longest postseason win drought. Guess what? And they're going to get another, another one this week because they're going to face the winner mm-hmm. of the Tampa Philly. No one yeah. worker for Stafford. All we heard booze from the Detroit crowd when he took the field before and after the game. He played well, but it was not enough. Ocho, what were some of the things that you took away from this ball game? Listen, I really enjoyed the ball game. I really enjoyed the ball game as opposed to what we had to endure the first time. <laughs> the first time around 4.30 yeah, around yeah. the time. Listen, this, this, was, this was an offensive clinic. This was an offensive clinic, damn near all four quarters. Damn near all four quarters. Stafford looked good. Golf looked good. They moved the ball up and down the field. I thought it was going to be a forty-point game for me from mm-hmm. each team. You know, we we didn't get we didn't get that high. We were damn near there. Puka Nakua went crazy, brother. Wait, let me make sure. I don't want to say I don't I don't want to say the name wrong. Amon St. Brown went crazy. Josh Renner went crazy. Obviously, the Lions coming out with the win today. I'm happy for golf. I'm happy for the culture shift. And what the Lions have been able to do, well, not the Lions, and what Dan Campbell has been able to do since he's gotten there. For a coach to be able to, to change to change a culture and turn it into a winning culture in, a, in such a short amount of time is unbelievable what, he, what he's been able to do. He was just talking about biting kneecaps not too long ago. <laughs> now we talk about we in the playoffs after a 32-year hiatus. Right. Man, some good football was played Very today, good man. football. From both sides. I, I know, I know, I know the Rams lost, but I'm just saying there was some good football played today in that second goddamn Matthew game. Matthew Stafford was 25 of 36, 350, 367, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jerry Goff was 22 of 27, 277, one touchdown. As you mentioned, Puka, uh, uh, Puka Nakua had 10 targets, nine receptions, a buck 81, which is the most receiving yard mm. in a in a game in a postseason game by a rookie. Uh, Amon St. Brown mm. had nine targets, a buck 10 on seven catches. Yeah, they could have called Holden. I thought they were gonna call Holden on that last one on that third down. He held him all the way yeah. through it, Ocho. He got away with one. He, he did. did a great job because he did. He got he offhand. Did. Go ahead. He got away. With it. No, I'm just gonna say he got away with it. Go ahead. You, yeah, you he got, and I thought I thought they were gonna call it. I don't know what uh, uh, the commentator. I know uh, it was an NBC game, so I'm assuming it was Collinsworth and uh, Tariko on the call. I want it'd have been interesting to hear what the, uh, uh, what Collinsworth thought. But I thought he grabbed him. I thought he held him throughout the uh, uh, throughout the call, which would have given them a first down had they made the call. Right. And who knows? That's a first down. Maybe you get another a couple few extra yards. Now you get a, a try for right. a field goal, and maybe uh, Detroit has to come down and get a field goal or a touchdown to beat you. But that was a very well played game. I mean, uh, yeah, you got to give the Lions credit because they've been waiting for this moment because this is a team now. Just what five years ago, six years ago, what they were zero sixteen mm-hmm. at one point. Oh, in 16, Ooh, yeah. you lost Ooh, yeah. all your games. Yeah. Lost all of them. <laughs> and now right. here they are with a – hey, you got another game, you got a divisional game at home. Mm-hmm. I can imagine it's going to be – it's going to be – if you thought it was loud and raucous for this wild card game, can you imagine right. you one win away That's from sweet. an NFC championship game? That's crazy. Who would have thought this? That's crazy. You made this move, Matthew Stafford. You say, you know what, Matthew, hey – We'll, we'll grant you, you know, we'll give you an opportunity to move on. We're going to take Jerry Goff and look at what they parlayed this in. You get a, a, a Jamison Williams in the draft. You get a, 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 a Gibbs in the draft. You you parlayed mm-hmm. that in some nice pieces. And so now mm-hmm. every, everybody's benefited. The Rams like what they got. They won a Super Bowl. The right. Lions like what they got. They got a nice nucleus around Jerry Goff, who's playing really good football. And as long as he stays clean, the Lions will be oh, yeah. fine. If he, they get into trouble when he turns the ball over mm-hmm. Ocho, and they're not over. Oh. They're, they're not going to be able to overcome that because the teams are going to get better, better as you go mm-hmm. along. But give the Lions credit; they mm-hmm. played really well. The Rams had a great season, um, but it ended in Detroit. Matthew Stafford did not get the homecoming, the win in the homecoming game that he thought he would. But he, I thought he played exceptional. He took some shots, and the, the way he threw the ball, to, man, can he throw the ball or what? People, I, 
I like what go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I know you're going. I like, go ahead. I like there's a term that I hear Jay Cutler use all the time. He's a great ball spinner. <laughs> yes. He's a great ball spinner. And both of them, both of them have fabulous arms, the mechanics, the, the arm angles, the ability to throw off balance, to be able to adjust based on with arm angles, depending on who's in front of them. If there's somebody draped over the receiver, they could put it in, in a certain position where only the receiver can catch it. Uh, really nice. Really nice. You watch Matthew Stafford and you watch him throw the ball. He can throw the ball over the top. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he dropped down. He throws it three quarters. Mm -hmm. He'll throw a sl completely sard arm. Mm -hmm. And you like the one he threw to uh, uh, the little receiver who caught. I mean, there was no separation. Two, two, he two, caught, two, 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 two. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, Ocho, they're yeah. not, they're not, guarantee you, they're mm -hmm. not five quarterbacks that could have made that throw, that throw in, that like that. in that tight window right there right. than what Matthew Stafford did. Mm -hmm. And well, and like uh, I said, he can on. flat out spin the football. Hey, did you see the no look, the no look pass a couple of times when he, he was he threw to the flat, he threw to the mm -hmm. he threw to the flat, but was looking straight ahead. Yes, slick. The, his, slick. I mean, look, we we've seen Far throw no looks, mm -hmm. but what must impress me is that this man threw a no look in the Super Bowl <laughs> with the when the chips on oh, the yeah. air cross the middle. Can, Yes. The middle of the field. The yeah, he hit Cooper that. Cup with on the third down. Yeah, I remember that play. I remember they that. They rolled play. a safety down and he had to look mm -hmm. him off. He's like, I ain't going. <laughs> I ain't going there. And, and, and but he was he was impressive. They couldn't get a stop to get the uh, uh to get him the ball back. Give a uh, uh give the Lions offense credit. The Lions yeah. offense they did a, because you know we can't give you the ball back in this situation. Mm -hmm. Because if we give you the ball back, there's a chance you're going to get the ball, the momentum, because now you have the momentum, and right. you're probably going to go down and kick a field goal or at least an attempt a field goal with a chance to win the ball game. Mm -hmm. And so give the Lions credit, give Dan Campbell credit, that team, because they've come a long way. Now Detroit seems to be like a destination mm -hmm. uh, where free agents would want to go because go. they're winning. The culture, yeah, yeah you know, a. Hey, you, you know, you got to have the right mentality to play for him mm -hmm. now, right? Because he's right. a he's a blue collar, hard nosed, mm -hmm. grind type of a coach, right? So, hey, you know what you're getting in when you go to Detroit because Detroit is blue collar. They they they, they car factories up there. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's right. hard up in Detroit, right? And that's the type of team that he's built. Uh, those guys believe in him. Jared Goff has uh, uh, Armand St. Brown. Uh, he didn't make the Pro Bowl, but he showed you hey. why he's a first team All Pro. All Pro, yeah. Most definitely. He showed do, you, you. do you think? Let, let me let me ask you a question. Do you think, as 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 players, what would mm -hmm. matter to you more? What do you think players value more? Being going to going, being an All Pro or going to the Pro Bowl? What do you? I rather I rather I rather be an All Pro. Okay. And personally, because you remember Ocho, they don't go to Hawaii anymore. They go oh, to yeah. Orlando or they go yeah. to Vegas, and it's not the game anymore. It's a skills yeah. competition. Yeah. So, it's the same. Uh, look, okay. I, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way. Because people are like, we're sharing the pro. It's a huge honor, but yeah. a lot of the luster has gone mm -hmm. because yeah. you're not growing to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Going to Orlando, what the hell is that? <laughs> used to, Ocho used to want to go, man, I'll get me a Mai Tai. I'm going to get me yeah. a blue Hawaiian. I'm going to be drinking right. out of pineapple. Right. So you got an opportunity to take your significant other, your wife, mm -hmm. or your family. Mm -hmm. You go yeah. across to, uh, to Hawaii. You get an opportunity yeah. to relax for a week. Yeah. Hell, you'll go to Orlando anytime. Yeah, yeah. You go to mean? Vegas anytime. Yeah, I, I don't think players will, will, will fully understand the no. joy and the pleasure no. it was to actually make the Pro Bowl and what an honor it was to make the Pro yeah. Bowl back during that time when we yes. were playing. Listen, mm -hmm. you think about that 10 hour flight, depending yep. on where you're coming from, or maybe maybe if you're already on the West Coast, you still got five hours ago. Yes. Your family, your friends, being in Hawaii, the culture, <laughs> the experiences, the traveling, the uh the traveling, the sightseeing, some of the things you have to do, and you get to take a part in being over in Hawaii for for a whole week. And then you have the game on the back end. Listen, right. it was it was it was it was an experience like no other in an honor. You know, and when you made the Pro Bowl back then, like, oh man! And then you, oh, so you remember now? It used to be um, the Pro Bowl was played after the Super Bowl, so right. a lot of times teams, the, right. the guys that made it, they were only mm -hmm. coming off the Super Bowl, or right. sometimes they were the guys that lost the Super mm -hmm. Bowl, right? And so a lot of times guys had appearances at the Super Bowl, so a lot mm -hmm. of the guys that was playing in the game was coming from the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. And and yeah. so, you know, a lot of times guys would get there early with their family. They might check in a day early or something mm -hmm. like that just to get an opportunity to relax. Mm -hmm. And then by the time, you know, we arrived, you know, I, I would like if I wasn't actually playing in the game, obviously, I would arrive. But 
guys would already be there with their family and they'd be mm -hmm. sitting around uh, watching the watching the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it, it was a great, but I do I, I agree, Ocho. I think the, the all pro is is a bigger honor. Right. And I think because the game is no longer played uh in Hawaii mm -hmm. and the luster, Ocho. I, I get it. It's a but they had they had they had to do away with the game because it wasn't a game, it wasn't tackle football anymore. It was yeah. an embarrassment. Yeah. And I told the guys and I said, look. I know, oh man, you no, bro. I'm not old school, but it's tackle football. Yeah, you can't just touch the guy on the butt mm -hmm. and then talk about the guy. Stop. Right. That's Are not you, football. You, matter of fact, when you think about it, you think about this. I'm thinking about the time when I played. I remember myself, Steve McNair, Peyton Manning, uh, uh, Ray Lewis, a couple of the fellas used to think the way the game is played now, it was somewhat like that a little bit. But we play serious. We thudding. Yeah. We thudding. But um, what we hit that fourth quarter. Yes. And Ray Lewis say, man, listen, it's money time. It's go time. Yes. Man, we need that money because we got to cover the expenses right. that we didn't have for the week we've been here. Yes. Oh, man, 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 people started playing, started playing serious. Well, we were up to about playing serious. We weren't, we weren't bullshitting. But that Ocho, fourth but, quarter of the Pro Bowl back then? But the man, money Sean had Taylor, gotten. Sean Taylor coming downhill. <laughs> oh, yeah, we hit the pub bribe uh, a Mormon. What? But see what happened, Ocho, is that the money increased. All of a sudden, it was twenty five, fifty, I think, fifty, seventy five thousand. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I, for like my damn, my whole career, it was ten thousand to the winners. It was five thousand to the losers. That's it. So, but that was it. Damn, that was it. That was it, Ocho. That was it. And like you said, you know, everybody, you know, hey, you, ain't nobody trying to get embarrassed now. Right, so don't right, be going right. out there trying to uh, run right. Hey, somebody knock knock you, you know what, in the dirt. <laughs> So right, right, right. Don't be out there trying to embarrass no uh, someone because they're gonna get you now. Mm -hmm. But come fourth quarter, yeah. you automatically knew it's go time. Button your chin strap yeah. up, it's tie your time. shoulder pads up. It's go hey, time, guy, guys <laughs> trying to get paid. Oh yeah, guy, hey guys, oh, yeah. hey like you said, guys had incurred expenses. They had mm -hmm. brought family members over there. That room yeah. is two hundred dollars a night. You got about six or seven people at two hundred dollars a night, and you feeding them. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. got to recruit some of that money. Yeah, some. I got to recruit some of that money, but it was a, it was a great time to get an yeah. opportunity to sit around, talk mm -hmm. football, and get an opportunity to meet and hang out with guys that mm -hmm. we normally wouldn't get an opportunity to hang out with right. and sit around and talk with. Mm -hmm. It's not like it is now. I mean, these guys now they're a lot more guys socialize a lot more in right. today's game mm -hmm. than what they did back then. Well, obviously, you know, having social media also bridged the gap and made it a lot easier yeah. mm -hmm. for you not to have to be face to face. So even if yeah. you don't see each other during, I mean after football season or during football season, listen, social media bridges the gap anyway, so you're always right there in somebody's face regardless, even though it's right. via social media. Yep. Jerry Goff is the first quarterback to ever win a playoff game against a team he previously started a playoff mm -hmm. game for. Mm. So Jerry mm. Goff should be uh, – he should be – I'm sure he's proud because he said it, it wasn't that he ended up because both were number one picks, yep. Stafford for Detroit, mm -hmm. Jerry Goff for the Rams, it's not that it was how it was done. And even Sean McVay said it could have been handled better. Right. But at the end of the day, Ocho, and this is what I always tell people, when you're trying to break up with someone and that mm -hmm. person doesn't want to break up, what's the easy way to do it? There mm -hmm. is none. Jerry Goff didn't want to be traded. He didn't right. want to leave L.A. Mm -hmm. So what's the easier way to tell him, son, we, don't, we, want, we think we, can, we are better without you? You tell your significant other. Mm -hmm. Ray will tell you, oh, mm -hmm. Joe, I, I think I could be better with someone else. Ain't no easy way to say that. Nah, ain't no easy way. <laughs> so, you know, and, and he's like, you know, the chip will never leave me. And Sean mm -hmm. McVay saying, you know, hey, you know, we could have handled that situation better. Mm -hmm. I just don't know of an easier way to tell someone you don't want them anymore. Yeah. If if chat, if you can chime in and say what's an easier way when you want said individual. Now, mm -hmm. if both of y'all don't want each other, it's easy to go. He yeah. said, well, it, you know, yeah, it's mutual, yeah. mutual interest. Mutual interest. Right. But but when someone still wants to be there mm -hmm. and the other party, you know, hey, you know, I just can't, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I just want to say, you know, yeah. um, you know, things haven't been going well, and I just Ooh. I appreciate everything that you've done. And mm. yeah, man, ain't nobody trying to hear that, Ocho. Like, and I can't, you can't get them years <coughs> back now. It's, it's you no. can't get them years back. And one thing you can't get back to, you can't get back time. Yeah. And they yeah. Don't, don't like it being wasted. So basically, you wasted golf time because you couldn't you couldn't see himself getting you over the hump. Time is the but one. But it was the right decision, though, get. wasn't it? 
Yes. They won the right Super Bowl. They won the Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 That's and you look tough, at Stafford. Man. Ocho, look at Stafford. Mm-hmm. He got the all-time most receiving yards in a single season with Calvin right. Johnson. Right. He got the triple crown. I believe if you look at Cooper Cup's regular mm-hmm. season, combined mm-hmm. it with the playoffs, playoffs, it's the greatest statistical season for a wide receiver in NFL history. History, yeah. Then you tap in with Puka Nakua. Most receiving, most receptions in a season for a rookie, most receiving yards mm-hmm. for a rookie. Mm-hmm. So Matthew said something. He doing something right. Yeah. yeah he doing listen. something right. He he is a he is a spinner of the ball. He yeah, is a man. Spinner of the ball. He he can he can do it. He can yeah. do it. So congratulations to the Lions. You're moving on. You mm-hmm. have another game uh, in Detroit. Yeah. You get the winner of the Philadelphia Eagles and the D- Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Uh, they have to feel good because think about it. They were like, man, after they lost that game to Dallas, they mm-hmm. dropped from the second to the third seed. Right. And like, hey, we win this game. Dallas is going to do what they do. We're going to have to go on the road, either go to San Francisco or go to Dallas. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, you never know, Ocho. Yeah, you never know. Now they get a, they get a second game at home. Mm. You never know, Ocho. You mm. might get a third game at home, Ocho. You never know. Yeah, but but you get that NFC Championship at home. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> 